Well, welcome to another day in the Butler household, folks. Sharon's been a bit busy, and also Gary's finished the blinds off now. Let's show them, shall we? Yeah. Right, so there you go. That's uh, really made a big difference then. It's really light and airy now, Sharon, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we've got to paint the ceiling. Someone did mention that. We know that anyway, so that's yeah, all. Right. Paint the ceiling when we, paint, we do the whole of the When we do the whole of the painting. But Sharon's just tried a bit of grey. I know it's only had one coat at the moment, it's but. Oh, is it? It's drying. It's yeah. drying out, yeah. And this is going to be painted white, the shelf that's going in for anybody who says in that it doesn't go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a work in progress, Sharon, isn't it? Yeah, just... So that grey is the same grey as what we've got in the hallway, yeah. isn't it? Delaware grey. And all through there, folks, as you can see, the um, the ceiling will be all painted in one colour, yeah, obviously. can't paint this and not that. No, so that's why we're not doing that right at this moment in time. So, yeah, there we go. And when the... I get back oh. today... Go on, baby. I'm just getting every, clearing everything out, going to the tip now, and then I'll be sanding that table when I get back. I've got the new handles. Oh, go on, have you? I didn't know yet. What have you bought? Oh, I see. This will be instead of yeah. that. Yeah. And these are going to be grey, you say? This is going to be grey, and I've brought some silver leaf paper. I'm going to try and go around the edge. About 10 o'clock. Gabby Sheik, look. Yeah. So a little bit distressed. I'll be very distressed by the end of it. Right, we're going to go down the uh, local tip now. As I say, the weather's a bit rubbishy at the moment, but um, we've ordered a digger for the garden. That's coming on the 22nd of this month. I've just been online now and ordered an eight yard skip. Nearly 300 pounds. Every time I go, it's getting higher and higher the price. That's... Look, nothing's gone down, is it? Everything's gone. No, I know, but I remember the last time, I know we've had one last year or whatever. I think it's about 250 or 260 pounds in, but it seems to have gone up again. That tree's come back in the bloom, I just noticed a shower. That yeah, yellow one, yeah, is that just... laburnum? Yeah, it always this time That one year. there, folks, look. Same yellow flowers are gone, that's it. There we go, yeah. Apparently that's poisonous, which we did know about, but someone did tell us about that I before. Think somebody said the hydrangeas are poisonous to dogs. Yeah, but at the end of the day, Shad, the dogs don't eat flowers, do they? No. And there's lots of things in the garden that's not good for people. Yeah, yeah so we are aware of that anyway. And someone said, that when they had hydrangeas, when they had them back in the 60s, they remember their mum and dad sticking metal rods in the ground with a rust, and that used to change the pH of the soil, and they used to change colour. Well, we know that. When you had that metal rod in the pear tree, it gave... Um, it gave it rust, leaves, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. the leaves. Yeah, yeah, so there you rust go. Rust spots, wasn't it? Actually? Anyway, so we're going to get on now. Uh, got loads to do today. And uh, we've got to do a cooking video as well, but you'll probably see that by the time this video comes out. Anyway, we're off. We'll see you a bit later on. Right, we've been out, we've got back. She wants to do some more work on the uh, table. She's got a little sand to make sure that sanding disc is in the centre. Looks like a blinking stormtrooper out of Star Wars, doesn't she? So she's got this little um, oscillating sanding disc. That's it in the centre. It's got a little vacuum bag on it. Right, and just do these top first of all. We'll show them a little bit, shall And then we'll show them the end result at the end of the video, yeah? Keep it flat. There you go. So, just taking that top layer off there, as you can see. This is an 80 grit disc, so it's quite a coarse one. And then what she'll do afterwards, she'll give it a good wipe down with a damp rag, won't you, baby? Mm -hmm. And then you'll do your painting preparation and stuff like that. Yeah. Right, we'll leave her to it, folks. We're going to go out now and show you where we've been over the last couple of days, and then we'll come back at the end of this video and see if this table looks any different than what it does now. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, folks, I had my car cleaned uh, completely because we had the mouse infestation, which turned out that they're not there anymore. I think I think they went, Sharon, from when we went, took the car to the airport. They're on holiday. They were on holiday, they're yeah. They're on a plane now. So um, I've had the car cleaned and valeted, and I couldn't get the glove box open. I've done, I've done a video on this on my Retro Restore channel, if you're interested. But um, many moons ago, how long ago was it, Sharon? Probably a couple of Christmases ago, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Gary and Stacey had these mats made for me for the, um, the car. So, I think it's only fair now. Oh, would it, would it if I open them, Martin, wouldn't it? Well, let's have a look. Let's open that door. They did clean all these mats. Get inside. Get inside, Merlin. Go on in here. In there, baby. Did you open that door, did you? Or did you open it? He's heard us outside, hasn't he? That's when you people see me turn my head. Yeah. Right. So, although it's been valeted and they brought these ones up really well, we're going to take these out. Look. There we go. Lay that down there. 
and uh, we'll, we'll christen it by putting the new mats in Sharon let's have a look Oh, it's not the right size, is it? Hey, they, yeah, I think they're handy, didn't they? They were bought for a Mondeo Mark yeah. III, so uh, you go around the other side then. I'll get the other one in the back and put him. Right, so that's that one there. Brand new match, people. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. I like the blue piping on them ones, though, but they're all curling up now, Sharon, aren't they? Yeah, they're old. And they are old, as you say, but uh, they're still in good nick. Keep them. They might do for uh, Jimmy's car or something. So there we it's go. It's a different car. It's got a Vauxhall. I know, but we all. Vauxhall, how you get universal match, didn't you? I don't know, but they're old now anyway. So let's get them two out of there, shall we? Put that one down there, baby. And these ones have got Retro Restore written on them, Sharon. Yeah. So let's get them in the front seat. The glove box is still under repair, folks. I'm waiting for a new latch to come on that, so uh, that's why it's hanging down. I got one on eBay, a complete unit for £13. Now, hold on. I think that's this one. one, that one. Is it? Yeah, because it's got the pedal right. Yeah, you here. take that, take that one then. Yeah. You go around the other side. I'll plunk this one in here, look. And it's branding from my Blink Retro Restore channel. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, Gary and Stacey bought them. Give it a pull. It's just a bit stiff. Let's get that one out. And lay that one in, baby. Superb. Is it under the pedal? Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Right, you just got to stick your knees under that chair. And where are we going today, Sharon? We're going to Mivrillum Airfield. I've not been there for years. Right. And, and it's only up the road. Well, you've not been there for years, Sharon. I've never been there. You've never been there. What's, that, what's actually there? Well, there wasn't a lot there. I took his mum there many, many years ago. Right. And there just was like a few, what are they called? Them domes. Domes? Oh, no, the... um. I can't think. What's a dome, Sharon? What do you mean by no, a dome? Shape buildings. The... Hangers? Yes. That's Domes? Well, they're like that sort of shape, aren't they? No, there's nothing there like There was a dome. hangers there, but there wasn't a lot in them. So whether they've done more, which they've got a new sign, so I think they've had things done up there. Well, well, let's go have a look, folks. Never been there before. Thank God the rain's held off. It was it was raining early on this morning when we went out and done a cooking video. So, um... You've already seen that one. That one went out last Tuesday. So uh, I'll take let's, these. let's get down, eh? What? I'll lock the door, love, because the door's Oh, Gordon, go and do that, yeah. We don't, yeah, otherwise. take them mats in, shall Because they're lovely and clean now. Otherwise, Merlin will be getting And them. we've ordered a digger for the end of the month. Hopefully, as you can probably see along here, folks, we used to have a, a, a really high hedge, all conifers up there, which were taken down many years ago. There's the remainers of one of them, look. But all these stumps there have got to come out as well. Hopefully they'll be rotted down quite a bit. That one's definitely rotted down, look. But um, we're going to try and do level this because I want to regravel all this. And also coming round to the side of the house, I'm going to be putting some gates down there, some gates where I can drive stuff into our actual garden area. And also dragging all the earth off, make a lawn at the end of the garden where it's all the weeds used to grow up and all that. That's coming at the end of the month, hopefully. I've already ordered the digger and a little dump truck for that. I've got to get a skip though, so um, that's all coming up. Right, let's get going down to Reverend Airfield, see what that's all about. Come along with us for the ride, folks. In you go, we've picked up our little guest who's coming along with us. Did I open it? <laughs> Would it have opened the door, shall wouldn't it? Yeah. Nice to see two Mark III Mondeos together. Look at that, look. You don't get to see that very often, folks. And this was the one, this is Stacey's one. We got this one, I think I found it on Facebook many moons ago, a couple of years ago, something like that. And uh, no one could fix it, it had, a, it had an issue with it. It went to two different garages, they couldn't get it running. The AA bloke who come and towed it, he couldn't get it going. And in the end, they, earned, they ended up selling it because it was this, this chap's grandmother's car. And I think it only had 36,000 miles on it, very, very low mileage. Anyway, cut a long story short, I got it going, I fixed it change the ECU over the brain in it immobilise a fault on it because of the ECU that it had in there so yeah there we go they've, they've still got it nice Mark III Mondeo still and in my eyes probably the most classic of the Mondeos now and especially my one being the ST220 which I'll be keeping because uh, I think they're going to go up in value as one of the last fast forwards of that era anyway let's get going Reverend and Mayfield here we come Well, here we are on our way now down to Meverinum. We're going to go through my village of Woodall Spa, and as you can see, everything's in blossom and it looks fantastic. 
Now you can probably see during the holiday time, Woodall Spa does get very, very busy. Lots and lots of cars and also lots of people as well. But it's a lovely little holiday village and we love it. So we're just heading down the Witham Road now and as you'll see in a minute, the lovely trees and the blossom. And all along here in the springtime, you normally get the daffodils growing all the way along here and it looks super. Right, so we've just come down through the little village of Martin and this is uh, the junction up here where we're gonna be going straight across. Now, if we were to turn right here and go towards Lincoln, we're going to be going straight across. This is the actual location where the Martin Airfield is, or the Meverin Airfield, should I say. And it is signposted directly in front of us. So let's cross over the main road. And as you can see there, the Meverin Airfield sign is on your left, just there, people, and it is open. <laughs> Well, here we are, baby. We are here. It's a little bit windy, isn't it? Fresh. And just notice this year, look. Um, camper van? A, a B registration Volkswagen camper van. That's a blinking old one. Probably about 1964, 1965, I would imagine. Wow, look at that one, look. And it's a left hand. It's a handbrake. Yeah, it's, it's a left hand drive one as well. Look at that, look. Wow, that's really retro, isn't it? Nice colour. Come around the front of it here, look. Split screen. It's a split screen as well. Well spotted, yeah? Thanks. Little um, little bladed windscreen wipers there, sitting in that little clip there. Look at that, I've never seen that before, shall I? What a lovely looking thing, isn't it? It is. Anyway, here we are, folks. As you can see, it's really windy at the moment. Let's make our way over to the entrance, shall And uh, see what this is all about, folks. Right, okay then, folks. We've bumped into Nick Taylor here. Nick is going to tell us exactly what, what this airbase is about, because we've never actually been here before. So... Let us in on the secret then, Nick. Certainly will. So welcome. This is um, RAF Metheringham in Lincolnshire. This was a home of 106 Squadron from November 43 till oh, the right. end of the war. Yeah. 106 Squadron came here from um, Syston, RAF Syston near Newark, yeah. under the commander Guy Gibson. Guy Gibson stayed to form the Dunbusters. 106 Squadron came here in the, in the winter right. um, of, of 43. Just over there, we have the um, gymnasium, the wartime gymnasium. That's that part there you said, wasn't That's it, That's right, Nick? the yep. large part there is the wartime gymnasium. Now, when 106 Squadron came over here in that awful winter, one of the worst winters of the 40s, they, no, none of the buildings were ready. Right. And the bomber crews slept on the floor of that gymnasium oh, right, okay. for two weeks. And in that two weeks, they were sleeping on that floor. They went out and bombed Berlin twice. Right, OK. Um, and you mentioned about that bit over the end yeah, there, Nick. What is that then? The there is the chapel, the wartime chapel, and that's full of memorabilia. We've got um, some parts of Guy Gibson's Mosquito that wow. he was crashed and killed in. Wow. And that is the actual plane you're talking about? Yes, there, the actual it? Mosquito that he wow, was, he was in. Yeah. Just over the th that line of trees there, yep. um, there's a Stanton Air Raid shelter, which you can go down. Right, okay. And the black building over here in the war was the ration stores, and that's full of exhibits and uh, stories of the air crews that served here. The big hangar over there houses a 1944 Dakota, C-47, and you can sit in the cockpit, you can play with the, the controls, you can sit on the original paratrooper seats. Wow. And then we've got all sorts of other bits and bobs in there as well. We've got a bouncing bomb from Scampton yeah. and one or two other things as well. And you'll find out why we have a Dakota on a Lancaster bomber airfield. There is a link with Nocton American Hospital four miles down the road. Right. And the American C-47 is flying into this airfield. Wow. And you'll find that out when you go into, into the hangar. 106 Squadron were here for 18 months. They lost 59 Lancasters flying from, from wow, here in those 18 about that, months. Wow, They're on all the big raids, Berlin. Yeah. The biggest loss was Nuremberg, the, the infamous Nuremberg raid where they lost yeah, five. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can go on the airfield. Um, just over that way, you can drive onto the airfield. It's a public road. You can drive along the perimeter track. Is that the way we come in with yep. somewhere down you there? Yeah, back it? out there, yeah. We've been along there overnight. Have we really? Yeah. When we've done that filming of a night spooky. Oh, that there. place, yeah. yeah. You can see the memorial to 106 yeah, Squadron. That's, that's yeah. right, we have seen that. Yeah. yeah. If you remember, folks, that's actually where we done our little uh, ghost hunt down there when uh, Sharon was actually petrified. So that I didn't realise that was latched onto yeah. this site. Yeah. And there is a ghost here, it's called the Metheringham Lass. You're you can, joking. You can, yeah, that's what we 
Williams? Where? You, you can look her up, the Metheringham lass. Is that the one who's supposed to be seen on the road? That's right, yeah. That's the yeah. one we was looking for, people, oh. but we didn't have any, any sign of that. Yeah. And is that a, that's a documented actual ghost, isn't it, apparently? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. How about that, yeah. folks? So yeah. that's all in this area here. Yeah. And uh, so you, you've got certain opening times, obviously. What is yeah, it? What we is open it? Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays. Yeah. And Bank Holiday Mondays. And that's from end of March till the end of October. Fantastic. So. And the fees here are to entry? Fees are £5.50 or £6.10 if you're happy to pay gift aid. And you can get a membership here. You can get, um, you become a member and you can come as many times as you like and you'll get all sorts of newsletters and you can come to the um, the monthly lectures, evening wow. lectures that we have here as well. So Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for informing us. We're going to go and have a little hunt around Fantastic. now. Fantastic. Enjoy. And, um, we and, will. Uh, and don't forget, we've got a fantastic cafe in the wartime gymnasium. Oh, here we go! Look, <laughs> cup of tea for everybody. Thanks, Nick. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks very much. a lot. So there you go, folks. What an interesting chap. And again, this little nugget I never even knew existed. So let's have a little look around it, show you what it's all about, and all the money he was just telling us that that people pay, even though it's not a lot of money, five pounds per person, you know, gets donated straight back into the building because he just told me these buildings here was only sort of like prefabs and. 80 years later, they're still up. They're only up, supposed to be up for 10 years, weren't they? For 10 years maximum, yeah. What's so this there you here? go. Look. Let's have a little look here. Look at this. Look. Wow, that's an original propeller there, Shall look. And they've actually mm. designed the brick engine around it. Look at that. Look. That's, that's not a real part, a, a real engine then. That's, that's made out of bricks, that bit. Oh, yeah, that's real. That bit, yeah, that's that real. That, that may there. be real, yeah. Shall, yeah. But it's just what a lovely little memorial that is. Anyway, let's have a little look in here, Shall. Look at that little baby. Look. That's the port inner engine. Look at the size of these things, folks. Look, you don't get a realisation until you're standing right next to them, yeah. which is another reason why you've got to come visit these places, just to get to see this thing that was in the air back in the 1940s, flying about. Unbelievable. Look how that's bent round the propeller. Yeah. Well, when they hit the ground, that's right. Look, this is an actual one, isn't it? Yeah, this that's is... bent right over. Look, doubled over there, look. And you can just see the size of these planes when you look at this here, look. That's the Lancaster bomber there, and all the... Uh, Probably bomber command there of that base or whatever. Just this, stare down on it. Look. This one here was during this flight. The aircraft got into difficulties while flying in the vicinity of Loch Lomond, oh, right. which resulted in at least in at least this engine being shut down and the propeller feathered in order to reduce the drag. The actual cause of the incident is unknown. However, the aircraft broke apart in midair, crashing to the ground in flames at Conic Hill near Loch Lomond, Scotland. So that's come all the way down from Scotland, Sharon. Yeah. How amazing is that? And this engine actually failed. That is totally amazing. They've got some lovely stuff for you to look about here. Lovely graphics people. All original photos from the 1940s there, no doubt. This is what they would have probably been wearing, Sharon. Look. Mm. Back then, look. Old canvas suits, look. And um, a life jacket there as well. So this looks like the Meverenham Air Base from above. And it's quite a vast area there, as you can see. Oh, you can light it up. I think he has no electric bike here, love. Eh? Hey, no electric bike here. So Pedal like power, Sharon. Let's have a look in here, Sharon. Oh, look at this, look. There's the old life uh, raft, Sharon, look. That's an original one there, it's amazing, isn't it? Some fantastic memorabilia in here, Sharon. The Bomb Amos cabinet, look at that, look. Heightened airspeed computer, look, they called that computer back in the day, look. Because it would compute with a dial, the uh, height and airspeed of a vehicle. And down there you've got uh, a bomb. A bombshell. Uh, just a bomb. Just a bomb. Just a bombshell. <laughs> That'd be all right. And what have we got here? Again, more um, cockpit compass there, look. And obviously, um, this is the pilot and engineer's notebook showing them where all the controls were. And they've got the actual gauges there, look, out of there. And you can see them on the diagram where they would have been on the actual um, aeroplane itself. Well, you really get a sense of the history of how we used to live back then. That's the old flight jacket there, look, the original flight jackets, look, from the era. Just come and see this here, Sharon. Look, there's a bit of original paintwork, which they used to paint on the uh, aeroplanes back then. This one's believed to be a uh, uh, nose art panel, believed to be from the Avro Lancaster NG414. Which is, what character is that? It's Goofy, isn't it? Is that Goofy? No, it's Donald Duck, isn't it? That's yeah. not a duck, Sharon. That's Goofy, isn't it? Whatever it is, it's Pluto, sorry. Is it Pluto? More... But to me, that looks like a beak. That's not a duck, Sharon. It's a bling Pluto, the dog, isn't it? It's got his nose there, look. Is it Pluto or Goofy? I didn't know a dog could do 
Oh, you are funny. It's got to be Pluto. Pluto, Pluto or Goofy? Pluto, isn't it? Was Goofy a dog in it? No, Goofy. It's Goofy, well, isn't it? Goofy, look. There's his teeth. That's Goofy. what I just said. Is yeah, it Goofy? Goofy? Goofy, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Right, so we're going to take a look inside the uh, hangar here, where we can actually see some real planes. Oh my god. Wow, oh my god, look at that, look. You can go in there, can't you? It's That's amazing. fantastic, look at that, people. Yeah, this is what a lot of people don't realise, shall. That is actually a mock-up of the actual bouncing bombs from the uh, Lancaster, I think you'll find. They used to rotate like that, be spun up on the plane, rotate, and then when they hit the water, they spun, and spun down on the dam. So you've also got, this is a new introduction here, you've got all this information on these boards there for you to take a look at folks. And this is of the history of the Dakota aircraft. And if you come over here, you can see all them boards over there. That is the information regarding this actual Dakota. I and mean, you can see the history of that one as well. So do come down and have a look and have a check of all that history. Really, really interesting. I've just been talking to the chap behind me there and he knows all about this, the different paint schemes it's got. One side of it is designed with the American colours and the other side of it is painted in the English colours just to depict and show you why it's got these stripes underneath. I won't tell you. I'll wait till you come here and you can sort that out for yourself with the, the uh, very helpful chap who's just been talking to me. So let's move on, have a little look around. This chap here, folks, this is uh, Mike Legal. He was the actual pilot of this thing when it come in to land and part of the um, engine cowling coming off, as you can see depicted in that picture there, and he actually landed it with that like that. So really fascinating history there. And you can see here all of the um, work that's gone on on the plane over the years and also the timeline of the plane here flying from 1947 right up to the year 2000. And if I'm not wrong, I think we can actually go inside and have a little look inside and get a feeling what it was like to be inside one of these big Dakotas. So let's get inside and have a look. So here we go, an original 1940s Willys Jeep there as well, folks. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. We're gonna go in via the parachute exit by the looks of it, Sharon. Ooh. Up we go, folks. This is a treat for you, people. Oh my god. <laughs> Fantastic, Sharon. One thing I noticed is how, th how thin it is. There's no insulation, it's just purely the outer shell there, isn't it? Oh, what bags. Right, Norman's just taken us on the um, Dakota and he's going to tell us a little bit about it actually, because we're, we're oblivious to it, Sharon, aren't we? Mm. What we've got here is the Dakota, the DC-3. Uh, can either be in one of two configurations, paratrooper aircraft, uh, which will take 28 paratroopers. Right. Or you could have 24 stretchers. Um, really? For Kazivak, which is what the Americans and the relationship with Mellering has yeah. uh, with this aircraft. Because um, this airbase, as you were saying, was predominantly for Lancaster's normally. Lancaster, 106 Squadron. But this oh, Dakota, right. or not this personal one, but the, the, the relationship was that they, they wanted this one here because of its medical attachment to the base, is that right? Yeah, because they, they used to bring the casualties in here or collect them yeah. and take them back stateside and what have you. Right. I was just saying, Norman, about 10,000 feet, it would have been absolutely freezing it cold in be. here. It would be. There's no insulation on these walls at all, folks, and the, the drone you must have got must be definitely, obviously they had their ear, ear covers on or whatever, but um, so we're in the back entrance now. We are, this is the cargo entrance. Right. Um, and obviously what you have here, two doors, yep. two cargo doors. We've only got one open. Yep. But in the cargo door open, there's what they call a plug. And that is the paratrooper door, because you'd never be able to open the door in flight. 
Oh, right, okay. Of the slipstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the plug was taken out, probably stored in the back. And that back room there, you just said the shower, and what was that again? This is the toilet. Actually, had the toilet on board. Well, not now. But no, no. <laughs> but it would have had. Who would have thought that, folks? Unbelievable. Oh, look at this, look. Now, you're seeing stuff here, folks, that you, you've got to come down and actually see what this was like. I know it's very dark in here, but this was the actual back end of the plane, and this would have been a toilet compartment. Absolutely amazing. So fascinating. And if you had to evacuate the plane, this is where you'd be jumping out of. Yeah. Amazing. Being an old paratrooper, I'm already breaking out in a sweat thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> right, he's going to take okay. us up to the front now. So we'll go to the front, the cockpit. Go in, yeah. Obviously, it's quite a walk uphill. It is quite a walk uphill. Because she's on the ground. Yeah. Because she's got a tail wheel rather than a nose wheel. Right. So as the aircraft taxied and began to take off, the, the rear end would lift. Right. Uh, so it would then level out. Yeah, gotcha. So you haven't got to go up and down this when, once you're in the air. Yeah. So would you like to go through? What's your name? Evie. Evie. Oh, Evie. Hi, Evie. Evie and Sharon. Sharon. Captain yeah. Sharon and Vice Captain uh, Evie. <laughs> right, and what have we got here then? Well, on the right, we've got the radio operator. Right, I'm the radio operator now, then, Nick. Is that right? Yeah. And over there? This is where the navigator would sit. Wow. So if I can go forward and put the pilot and the co-pilot in position. <laughs> It's so hard to walk up this plane, folks, yeah. while it's while it's uh, stationary because there's such an angle on it. So what we have here, we've got Evie sat in the captain's seat, right? Sharon in the co-pilot seat. Wow! You can see two controls, uh, and either pilot could control the aircraft. Right. So they are linked. And there's no computers in this at all, is there? It's all done no. by levers and pulleys and yeah. toggles and uh, switches and analog dials and what have you. Wow, that's amazing. And everything is manual. In here. We'd have the navigator sat here and obviously communicating with the pilot and the radio operator yep. who sat to his right. Yeah, that's yep. right there. Um, in the civilian role, which this aircraft was in uh, immediately after the war, this probably was thinned out and became a galley, we think. Oh, right, okay. Uh, with the toilets yeah, yeah. on the rear of the aircraft. And this little thing up there, is that some sort of radar thing up there, is it? Or? Uh, yeah, that, that's the, uh, it is a radar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, the canopy is open there. We have a small hatch, uh, and that was an escape hatch. For but the pilot or the people the at the front of the plane? Yeah. yeah. You're sitting in the front here now with me. I'm in the uh, vice captain's chair with exactly the same controls has mirrored on the other side which the captain would be sitting in and i was just saying to norman all these controls here there's not a computer operating these it's all levers pulleys switches and gauges so you're actually going by the feel of the pedals there we go look at these look you're flying this plane manually with no computers telling you what to do you've got to go by feel and looking out of these little windows here all you've got is these two and the side window there well i'm looking out of the wing there and i've got that massive engine and those engines over there are Pratt and oh, Whitney R18 engines in this, and you can imagine them turning and spinning in the air. And looking above our head there, in the event of needing to bail out, that's where you'll be jumping out of that little window there. Look at that. Wow, that's amazing. To be able to sit in the vehicle like this, it's worth paying the five pounds and plus a lot more money, in my opinion, to come down and experience what these people were actually dealing with back in the 1940s. What an experience, and you can come on here and do this yourself, people. Just looking in this book, folks, you can see them there getting a Willys Jeep into the back by opening both of the actual doors there. So when you look at this here, this would have actually been transported, opening that second door there, as you can see, that would have come open, and they would have had to have come in on an angle, and one of these would have actually been carried by this plane. That's amazing. Right, so you probably see this little plane here. This is a horse glider, folks. There's a little scale model of it there. This glider would have been the size virtually of the, the actual Dakota itself, and the Dakota would have towed this behind. And I don't know if you can closely see there, there would be a, a cable there look, of it being towed by a Dakota. This is the weld bike. This was used by paratroopers in World War II. Was folded, the, the handlebars and the seat folded down, and the whole thing would be transported in that container there. Wow. And that container would be uh, 
dropped from the uh, aircraft. And that's an original. Where do you find stuff like that from? Where well, it's actually on loan to us. Oh, it's on loan. So it is yeah. in someone's yeah. private collection, probably. Yeah, it is, yeah. How fascinating was that, Sharon? That was absolutely amazing and to go on that plane. The beauty is here, what I've just noticed, folks, is that when you go around there, there's three or four different guides in there. Yeah. We just happen to stumble upon Norman, and they take you around the whole exhibition and tell you stuff which isn't common knowledge with the information boards there. So. You've got, to, you've got to come here for fiver. You can't, you can't beat it, Sharon. No, And absolutely. I've been up here 24 years, Sharon. Well, we've been up here 24 yeah. years. And we've never, well, never been here to this extent. Right, let's move on, people. We won't physically show you everything here, but we're going to show you, obviously, yeah, what it's all about. <laughs> but even if you come just to go on that aeroplane, that Dakota, and sit in the actual front seat and feel what that was like, it was superb. And it really gives you a feeling of what the history of the area must have been like and how hard it would have been for them people living back in them days. So we're standing outside what used to be the old gymnasium back in the 1940s, which was only gonna be built for, or to last 10 years, mm -hmm. Sharon. And on the end of it is the old chapel, which you can just see there, people. And that actually houses part of the old plane that uh, Guy Gibson, Gibson was flying when it crashed. Yeah. So let's have a look inside the chapel. I think there's a little tea room in there as well. And maybe have a cup of tea while we're having a look around, Sharon. I tell you, it's a nice place to bring your family and also have a picnic because you can sit anywhere. Yeah, there's loads of green land out here. Wow, look at that. They've got a fantastic model of uh, Lancaster bomber up there. Folks, look at that. I don't know what size that is, but just have a look at that. If you haven't been to East Kirkby and seen the actual Lancaster bomber or even um, RF Coningsby, this will give you a very good idea what it was like to stand under the wings of one of them things. It's maybe a maybe one third size model. I don't know. I'm not sure. But this would have been. Can you imagine all them years ago? This would have been the uh, gymnasium where they would have um, exercised and trained. And what we got over here looks like some wing sections here. Is it from the Lancaster? There we go. Yeah. So we've got the Lancaster wing tip there. Wow. Look at that. Just show you the scale of what the wingspan was like. Even though that's only partial. Fantastic. What you found here, Sharon? The old stoves. There were some that were sort of like mobile and they'd go around to the airmen and giving them drinks. Wow, look at that. You've got some, some actual inside, pictures there. Yeah. Look at these old, um, I don't know whether they're coal fires. This is called a triplex cooker, folks. This is a number four model on display. It's made of cast iron and consists of a large oven uh, with a fire door and a stove pipe. A hob standard and three hob sections. Oh, there it is there, look. That's the uh, three yeah. different hob standards there. Yeah, look at that, look. No air fryers. And then you've got here the old potbelly stove, Sharon. Look at that, look. Yeah. The potbelly stove uh, design had its roots in history as far back as the 1800s, Sharon. During World War II, the RAF accommodation huts were fitted with potbelly stoves and they were usually placed in the centre of the room. There you go, like You know, that. like when, yeah, you know, like when you watch the old war films where they like break out of prison camps, you always see a very similar stove to that, don't yeah. you? So although this was the gym hall, I would imagine, Sharon, looking by that board there, that this is where they come to have their debriefing and um, details of what's going on in the uh, airbase. Mm. So this looks like some sort of training module where this is rigged up to that little mock cockpit there, as you can see, Sharon. And that would actually tra maybe train the pilot to what it must be like in the air. Let's have a look around oh. the other side of it. Coming around here, as you can see, that's linked up via cables to this sort of simulator here. The uh, pilot would sit and obviously um, you'd shut the lid down and then you would get obviously simulation of flying one of these planes. And if we come over here, it actually explains to you. So looking at this, Edwin Link uh, developed a passion for flying in his boyhood years, but was not able to afford the high cost of flying lessons. So when he left school in 1927, he started developing the simulator, an exercise which took him 18 months his first pilot trainer in 1929 resembled an overgrown toy aeroplane and from the outside with short wooden wings and a fuselage mounted on a universal joint, organ bellows from the Link Organ Factory, the family business, was driven by an electric pump that made each trainer pitch and roll as the pilot worked the controls in 1929 when he first built that. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've just come up this road and uh, just spinning the camera around, you can see an actual air raid shelter, Sharon. Yep. Which is half built into the ground. I'm not sure whether we can go in it or not. We can if he's going in. Let's have a little look. What's this on here, Sheldon? Look. Oh, this is the layout of the actual place now. That's where we are right now, up here. So you can see the, Ger uh, the German War Gymnasium there and the church annex. You've got the main museum annex where we come in and the visit the centre and museum is where we went in there. We haven't seen the blast shelter yet, nor the picket post. So we've got that to come. Can you get in there, Evie? Yeah. Let's have a look around here, people. And even beyond these gates here, as you can see, look, there's a, other parts. Because Sharon said many years ago, when she came up here, these gates weren't here or that was open. She said that went on for miles down there. Must have been part of the runways. So let's have a little look in here. Ooh. Oh, hello. You might get the eebie jeebies in no, here, Sharon. I don't Sharon. like this. I don't like it. Oh, this is a, uh, this looks like a metal. Oh no, it's concrete construction. Oh, isn't it warm? Touch how warm it is. Yeah, it is warm actually. Look at this, people. Can you imagine the people that have sat down here over the years? Let's walk down here. There's no lights in here at all. Apart from what looks like to be some sort of ventilation tube there and I found two people sitting down the end there just in case the uh, bombs are dropped and again although we're showing this on video folks you can't sense it on the video but I can sense something down here Sharon yeah I'm getting out actually I don't like it stay where you are baby I don't like it in here stay where you are just stand in here Sharon. I can you just put my head on the wall Oh, I've cool. got a shudder then, Sharon. Yeah. Put it there like that. This place is holding some memories, Sharon. I can hear something. Billy. Billy, where are you? He's crying, little Billy shout. He's lost his mum. Oh, no. Yeah. Not he's lost his mum, he's lost his desk. He should have been sitting at that desk, Sharon. Oh, silly Billy. He's lost his pen, that's silly, what he's lost. Silly, silly Billy. Billy. He's lost his pen, Sharon. <laughs> silly Billy. Anyway, yeah, it's a bit spooky, Sharon. Let's get out of here. Oh, I don't like. Silly Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sharon. The Stanton Air Raid Shelter. There you oh. go, people. The J-shaped segments with bitumastic streaking to the side. That's oh. probably the joining strips there. Look. With bitumen and their actual waterproof there as you can see look that's what the bitumastic joints were there for so yeah you said this was open before this must have all been yeah, part of it yeah that you could walk on for miles yeah i but, mean i'm talking maybe about 18 years ago yeah again that's no public access whether that bit of land has been sold off but as you can see over there show there's still an original look there like a shelter over there yeah. And you did mention over in the woods there as you well you see them as well in the woods yeah so that whether or not that's owned by the um place now I'm not too they might sure have sold it off to build that hangar because yeah. that nothing like that there was no plane yeah. here right okay then folks we're not going to show you absolutely everything here so that's the Meverenham airfield visitor center do get yourself down here the link will be below and as you can see it's only five pounds to get in people yeah the atmosphere and the stuff you can sense when you turn up at these places absolutely fantastic and it's actually only about four miles from our village of Woodall Spa mm. anyway we're going to move on now we'll see you a bit later on Oh well, here we are, a little bit later, and as you can see, it's had its surface uh, sand down now. Isn't that right, Merlin? Uh, he's all right, baby. It dries pretty quick, that paint, doesn't it? Come and sit down, Merlin. Come well, and sit down. You just done that side. Yeah. 
well there you go it's turning grey and uh, just had a first coat folks so um, it's going to be a while yet shall isn't it yeah got to let it dry between coats as well this is a water based paint by the way folks this so, is this is a Chalky Range or Annie Stone, whatever name it is. You've got Farrell and Ball, that's one of them. Nope, I don't use none of them. What is this here? Sa wood paint. Satin wood. Yes, yeah, so I bought the other paint, and with wear and tear, it's all chipping off. And yet, I've done other things with this paint, other furniture, and in the hallway, and it gets all the time, and there's no chipping. So, you're happy with it? I think this is the way to go. So the pound of fortune, because they're like fifty pounds a tin. How much is this a tin? This was twenty five pounds. Twenty five pound already mixed. Yeah. Right. You happy with that? That works I, for you. I well done, baby. Been... You carry on. We'll come back and look at it later on at the end of the video. Yeah. Well, you've moved on a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, I'm taking it to the next level. The next level. Let's have a look what you're up to at the moment. She's painted the table grey now, as you can see, people, and she's just working her way round, putting this gold silver. leaf, silver leaf. Sorry. We like silver, yeah, let's it. have a little look around here. You've actually bought silver leaf paper here. Look, you buy it in sheets, and then you've got to put on this sort of. Is it the varnish? That's the varnish. That's isn't the it? glue. The lids That's the glue there. Look, it's a gilding adhesive you put on there. Look. Sorry about my hands, folks. I've just done an oil change on Jim, uh, Jimmy's van, so I haven't had a chance to wash my hands yet. I thought I'd quickly come in here while she's doing this, and all you do, you put that glue on. Like you actually done it here as well, haven't you? Yeah, it's got to be a foot, roughly for about an hour to get tacky. Yeah. And then you just literally lay the leaf on. Lay the leaf on, then you lose your little brush. Which is a bit coarse, this one, I must say. And I'm literally, which I've learned, it's just literally... It's technique, it. isn't it? It's just flicking it as light as possible. Yeah. And wherever the glue is, it will stay. And yeah. where the, there was no glue, you can just brush it off, can't you? Yep. And that, you, and that right, Dougal? It's so therapeutic. I'm really... Enjoying doing this, and I right. think well, I would, as you say, you've upcycled this table. It looks like a totally different table now, Sharon. I like all our furniture and all our furniture solid wood. That yeah. table there yeah. will be having the same treatment as yep. this. There now I go. know how good. And this, this silver leaf I bought from Timu. Right, how much is that? About a hundred sheets for three pounds something. Oh, well, you can't go wrong, can you? And it, nothing wrong with it. And afterwards, you've got this, as I say, this um, yeah. varnish. Yeah which you paint over the top of that and that will stop it from peeling any further. Yeah, which I'm going to also, with this silver, I'm just going to go around the edge in here as well. Like a distressed look. Yeah. And if people want any ideas, where did you find the ideas? Pinterest. Have a look on Pinterest. There's loads of people who do little things like this, little projects, and uh, just gives you a little bit of idea and inspiration if you're upcycling or recycling stuff. And uh, yeah. It takes it to another level. And that it? paint, as you mentioned the other week, was... Um, Paint. Normal wood paint, yeah. and it's washable as well, which is yeah, a nice I thing. I like it, it's very hard. Grass. And let's have a look at uh, what do you think about it, Dougal? Dougal says, I is it all right? Are you okay, Dougal? Hey, you we've okay? Got a nice day. We've got Abba on in the background. I says, Mummy's being quiet. And what about him? He's being quiet for a change, Sharon. Yeah. Look, oh, here we go. Am, here we go. Look, he's here again. Look, just what is keep him away from the glue, right? So well, I've got to ask you to move the car now, yeah, Sharon, because okay, um, I've got to take Jimmy's car down. I'm going to put a new battery on there for him, folks. Come on, he's got a bit on his nose, Sharon. Never mind. Anyway, right, let's go do that. He's here again, people. Look. Oh, and Dougal's coming in now, look. <laughs> ain't you, Dougal? Hey? They're a funny couple of dogs, aren't they? Most loving dogs. Of course they are. Right, let's get going, shall we? We'll see you a bit later, folks. Yeah. 